Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I'm going to show you guys what is going on with Xenon light sources because I've got two of them here in my shop and both of them were malfunctioning. And I can see maybe some maintenance issues and since they both came from the same account, we're going to open them up because when you find a problem with one, there's a good chance that problem carries over to the other one, to which it's a lack of maintenance, possibly uh, missing some parts. One of my light sources is not lighting, or that's what they initially said. The other one, they said it was not bright enough. So let's go ahead and take a look at these two light sources and see what's going on. Here is the light source that they're claiming it is not bright enough. Although with a light meter, it actually showed fine. The turrets on this side, you can see, we're actually looking at it from the rear. Take a look. I don't even need to say it, do I? This guy has not been properly maintained. This is where the cold air is induced. It goes across your heat sink, cools it down, cools down your power supply, which is volatile. And right over here is your light chamber. Problem is, is it's dirty. That means nobody's opened it in probably years. Let's see, is the fan dirty? Oh yes she is, you're a dirty girl. Okay, so let's go into what's going on with this guy. So you can see this is an older technique for attenuating the light signal. There is a dithered disc right down there at the bottom, you see it? And when I rotate this cord, you can see, see how the disc doesn't activate completely. So it goes from fully occluded to partially open. Now those large holes never make it over to the orifice that goes out to the light cord, you see that? And if I play with the knob, it will do it. So what it is, is that's some slippage on here and that's probably partially because it's dirty. So what we gotta do is we gotta pull off this right here. We gotta clean it because it's, it's a little bit sticky and we gotta make sure it's adjusted so that it's fully open and we gotta make sure there's no slippage or stretch. And if there's too much stretch, that means that the rubber or the Buna N, uh, which is what that is probably made of, it's uh, like a type of silicone, that means that it's starting to degrade and we'd have to find a replacement. I don't think this time we'll have to. We just gotta clean it, it's feeling sticky and that means it's, it's not delivering all the energy that it's supposed to. Okay, so that's one issue, that's another issue. Let's go on over to this guy. All right, so this guy here, they initially were saying that it you turn it on and you don't even hear the tick, tick, tick. So again, these are Xenon light sources and in the beginning of a, uh, it's a two stage power supply, which we can take a look at over here on this guy. So two stage power supply, there's a high voltage section and then there is a low voltage section. So what happens, you see right here's your silicone wires. Yep, I'm probably gonna get zapped. Uh, this is your high voltage stage right here, this little riser board, you see that? And on the riser board, there are these little air gaps. So it'll charge up a capacitor until it's like 10,000, 20,000 volts. And the spark will jump across the gap. And the spark gaps look a lot like these guys right here. Yeah, I'm probably going to get zapped because I'm touching stuff. See these little white things right here, right here and right here? That is exactly what it looks like on your power supply. And it's going to be on this card. And if I go fishing around and get zapped, you'll be able to see it. It's on there someplace. There's a little spark gap, and when you flick it on, you'll hear it tick, 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 and it will, it, what it's doing is it's charging up and sending the voltage across that gap, which is supposed to ignite the bulb. Once it's ignited, then you go to a low voltage, high amperage to keep the, the excited bulb lit. So it's two stage, high voltage, low amperage, and then it flips once it's lit, and then it goes to low voltage, high amperage to keep it going. So on this guy, they said there's no tick tick. Well, if there's no tick tick, you gotta make sure that you got power, okay? Do we have power? The other thing that you have to worry about, light sources break where customers or users interface with them, okay? So this is a place where they interface, this is a place where they interface, this is a place where they interface, but a lot of people don't take into account this guy right here. See if the door is slightly ajar? even by half a millimeter. So all of these light sources have a lockout, which on this guy is this guy right here. See that? And it's threaded, but there's no cap on there. See that? And the cap is threaded itself so that you can adjust its throw, which is how far out it, it, it engages with the door. Now there's multiple things that we can do for this. One of them is bend the door in a little bit so it'll better engage. 
But the other thing is maybe to find a replacement cap or maybe there's something that you can put here on the inside that will activate it a little bit better. Multiple solutions. But if you don't hear the tick, 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 you got to find, do you have AC mains coming in? If you do, okay, does this guy light up? Which, look at this. With that interlock opened, it disconnects AC mains right at the start. All right, very interesting. Xenon light sources are some of the few that have that feature. And this is one place where users interface with the device. And as I said, that's usually where they break. So that's where this one was broke, right here on the adjustment knob. So even though it showed that it had plenty of light output on a light meter, it wasn't fully unoccluded, which is right down here where the large uh, circles are. So what I'll have to do, you can see right there is fully open. And then, yeah, there's, there's a little bit of stretch. So we gotta adjust that. We gotta clean that belt because what it's doing is it's, it's not turning it enough. So either this bearing right here is a little gummed up and it's resisting and that's kind of what I think. Yeah, I think there's a little bit there. So we got multiple things going on, Xenon light sources, they're easy to fix. They just need a little bit of love and definitely some preventive maintenance. Okay guys, that's very simple. Uh, but light sources, they tend to catch fire if you don't maintain them properly. So be sure to go through and open up your light sources, do proper preventive maintenance, which is clean them, inspect them, Make sure that your light bulb does not have any dark spots or pitting on the parabolic reflector, uh, which is a big indicator of lots of things going on with it, possibly a bad or an expiring bulb. But do your maintenance and love your light sources, okay? They catch on fire, and I've proven it in other videos. Thanks for watching, guys.